lives and indulges in sin is of the devil. That's what we read last week. I didn't say that. John said that. The Holy Spirit said it through John. But I'm talking about brothers and sisters who have a genuine desire to follow God. And yes, they may struggle in different areas in their lives. Yes, they may have certain weaknesses. But we're not to look down on those brothers and sisters. We are to encourage them. The Bible says that the strong ought to help those that are weak. Our desire should not, we should not use those opportunity, those opportunities to make ourselves look better. That is not of God to put others to shame. But we are to love the brethren. That is a sign of a believer. And it's just one of them. There's many signs that we've gone through in the scriptures, and specifically in this book of 1 John. But that's one of them. That we love the church of Christ. Because Jesus died for the lowliest one. We read in the scriptures when the when 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 Jesus speaks about the different members of the body, there are some that are weaker than others. But more honor is given to those that are weaker because of their weakness. I want to go ahead and read that verse because I don't think I expressed that right. Here we go. It's in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21. It says, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble, or the New King James says to be more weaker, seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. I want to read down the King James. It's a little bit more modern, and it's a little bit easier to understand. And it says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, Much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body but that the members should have the same care for one another. Paul says that weaker members, weaker parts of the body, referencing to brothers and and sisters in the faith, are necessary. They're necessary so that we can depend on one another. And we have to be careful when we look down on another brother and sister because of their weakness. That is not of God. And that surely and most definitely is not the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Brother Javer just spoke about weakness, and we need to look at this in another way as well, because what the Scripture here is talking about is Cain, and Cain rebelled against his brother. So this same rebellion you're going to see against authority, against leadership. So let's take a look at this in the Bible so people will say, well, Brother Lewis, what are you coming with this? This is found in the book of Numbers 14, starting in verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, I have done great things for these people, and they still reject me by refusing to believe in my power. So they will no longer be my people. Do you understand that you could actually reject God's power? I will destroy them, but I will make you the ancestors of all nations, even stronger than theirs. Moses replied, With your mighty power, you rescued your people from Egypt. So please don't destroy us here in the desert. If you do, the Egyptians will hear about it and tell the people of Canaan. These Canaanites already know that we are your people and that we see you face to face. And they have heard how you led us with a thick cloud during the day and flaming fire at night. But if you kill us, they will claim it was because you were powerful enough to lead us into Canaan, as you promised. Show us great power, Lord. You promised that you love to show mercy and kindness. And you said that you are very patient 
but that you will punish every guilty of doing wrong, not only them, but their children and their grandchildren as well. So, brothers and sisters, yes, we need to love each other. We need to learn from each other, but we need to respect each other and respect the authority that God has delegated over your life. And when we lose respect, when we lose love, then we lose it all. We don't show that we have Christ in us. We show that we have the devil. Verse 15 in First John chapter 3 gives us into an insight on how God sees sin. He says, Whoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Now, hate is an emotion, it is an intention, it is a motive. But yet God equates this intention and emotion with a physical action. Because God sees our intention as if we already committed that sin. See, Jesus tells us in the Sermon of the Mount, if we look upon a woman and desire her, in our hearts, we've already committed adultery with her. Because in our hearts, there was already that intention. He says, if you're angry at your brother without cause, you have committed murder. Because sin, brothers and sisters, long before that comes to fruition, it is just like a seed. It starts in our hearts and in our minds and eventually bears the fruit, which is death. That's one of the things we looked at last week that James tells us about, that the fruition of sin that brings forth the fruit of death. And it all starts from the beginning. It all started from the beginning. Look what God says to Cain, and we're about to wrap up this session tonight. But the Lord says to Cain in Genesis chapter 4, verse 17, and it says, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And I read it from the New King James. It says, If you do well, we will not be accepted. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And his desire is for you, but you should rule over it. And of course, we see that Cain didn't have the power to overcome the sin in his heart. And he gave in to it. Because in his heart, he already had murdered his brother. God sees not just the fruit of the sin, not just the consequence of the sin, but the root of that sin, God sees our hearts. Sin is not just our actions that can be proven, but is the intentions that we have inside of us. And I want to finish up with this verse, uh, verse 16. And it's very interesting that 1 John 3.16 is very similar or goes together with John 3.16 and all the things, the other verses that we looked at in the book of John. It's no coincidence. It's the same writer. and it's the same Holy Spirit. And he says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, or by this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying in John chapter 13, John chapter 15, that just like he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our life for a brother. And that's the way we demonstrate the love of Christ to others. That's the way that we truly demonstrate that Christ is in us. It's action. Love is a verb. It is a word of action. It is not an emotion. It is action. Amen. Brother Javer spoke about love, and that's exactly what it means. It means to show mercy and kindness. And that's what all of us need to do. We need to show mercy and kindness to each other. Father God, tonight, Father, I thank you for this message. Lord, I ask you, Father, to reveal this truth to people, that we are to love one another, respect one another. And like the Bible says, we need to respect the people in authority as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to reiterate what Jesus says here, and what he shows us is that what love truly is, is sacrifice. Love is sacrifice. Thank you again for listening tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Radio Redemption and Power. Thank you for being part of this broadcast and this ministry. 
And uh, we hope that it's been a blessing for you. We invite you to visit our webpage to contact us via email at redemptionandpower at gmail.com. Or you can also call us at 305-320-7727 or send us a message on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you again. May the Lord bless you. Every day the world is becoming darker and darker. Soon the Son of Man shall appear in glory and power. And the nation shall mourn with the sight of his coming. Are you ready for the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? As the armies of darkness march towards global domination, many slumber as we approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us awake and announce his kingdom. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. You are listening to Radio Redemption. And power! And power! Power! For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Rejoice in unrighteousness.